Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? So now I will be taking a briefing class on your practical topic, estimation of the serum protein. So this is one of your main practical topic where you have to perform a colorimetry experiment to estimate the concentration of the serum protein in an unknown sample. Okay, this is important for your practical. So estimation of the serum protein. Let's start uh, with the difference between the plasma and the serum. So plasma is the fluid portion of the blood after the cells, blood cells like RBC and WBC are removed by the process of the centrifugation. And the serum is the fluid portion of the blood after the blood is allowed to clot, that means after the coagulation of the blood. So in order to obtain the plasma, we need anticoagulant, anticoagulant like heparin, EDTA, and citrate solution. And in order to obtain the serum, no anticoagulant is required. As fibrinogen, one of the protein, this is required in the process of the clotting is used up in the formation uh, of the uh, clotting. Fibrinogen and other coagulation factors are absent in serum. This is the main difference between plasma and the serum. Fibrinogen and other coagulation factors are absent from the serum, but in plasma, as there is no coagulation process, fibrinogen and coagulation factors will be present in plasma. As fibrinogen is used up in the clotting process, there will be a decrease in the protein concentration in serum as compared to plasma. Approximately 5% lower in protein concentration 
can be seen in serum as compared to plasma. So this is the difference between plasma and the serum. This is the picture of the vacuated blood collection tube. So first one that this red cap vacutainer is used for collecting the sample when we want to measure the analytes in serum. So there is no anticoagulant present in this red tube. Most of the analytes in biochemistry like uh, protein, uh, enzymes, hormones, this measure, uh, in order to measure this analyte, we have to collect the blood in this red color tube. And this blue is for the uh, coagulation profile study and sodium citrate is present as the anticoagulant in this blue citrate vial. And gray one is for the plasma glucose and this purple is EDTA vial. And this yellow, there is no anticoagulant present in this yellow vial. So this can be used for the serum study. So our topic is the estimation of the serum protein. So albumin, globulin, and fibrinogen, these are the three major protein which is present in blood. Out of these three, fibrinogen is consumed during the process of the clotting, so it is absent from the plasma. So by the, the term total, uh, total serum protein consists of only albumin and globulin. Okay. So coming to the individual protein, albumin. Albumin is the most abundant plasma protein and it is synthesized by the hepatic parenchymal cells. And it is made up of single polypeptide chain of 585 amino acid with molecular weight of 66 kilo delton. And at physiological pH of 7.4, Net, net net charge of albumin is negative due to presence of high number of charge amino acid it is highly soluble in water and plasma half life of albumin is 15 to 19 days coming to the functions of albumin one of the most important function of Albumin is to maintain the colloidal oncotic pressure in the vascular space. So when there is decrease in albumin in blood, uh, this colloidal oncotic pressure cannot be maintained. So there will be a collection of the fluid in the interstitial uh, sp uh, space and this will lead to edema and clinical manif manifestation will be like puffiness, uh, around the eyes, swelling of the face, and feet. Okay, and uh, so albumin is important to maintain the colloidal oncotic pressure. Second important function of albumin is it acts as a transporter. This is due to the presence of many charged surface group and many specific binding sites in albumin. And it acts as the transporters of many compounds like free fatty acid, bilirubin, calcium, thyroid hormone, and steroid hormone, and certain drugs like penicillin and sulfonamides. Normal level of albumin in a serum is 3.5 to 5.5 gram per deciliter. Now coming to the second protein, serum protein, globulin. Uh, globulin is a heterogeneous family of protein with molecular weight ranging from 12 to 900 kilo delton. And gamma globulin, one of the types of the globulin is the heaviest uh, among the globulin. And as compared to albumin, it is less water soluble and level of uh, normal level in serum is 2 to 
0.5 gram per deciliter. So these are the types of the globulin, alpha globulin, beta globulin, and gamma globulin. This is listed in order of the electrophoretic mobility in the agarose gel. So in alpha region of the gel, you will get alpha-1 globulin and alpha-2 globulin. Example of alpha-1 globulin is alpha-1 antitrypsin, alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, high density lipoprotein. Alpha-1 antitrypsin and alpha-1 acid glycoprotein are the acute phase reactants, acute phase protein. And uh, example of alpha-2 globulin are heptoglobulin, alpha-2 macroglobulin, celluloplasmin. And again, celluloplasmin is one of the acute phase reactants. Uh, beta globulin consists of beta-1 and beta-2. And beta-1 uh, consists of transferrin C4 complement protein and low-density lipoprotein. And this transferrin is uh, negative acute phase reactants, means there will be decrease in the level of the transferrin in case of the infection, yeah, inflammation. And beta-2 globulin consists of beta-1 microglobin, C3 complement protein, and IgA. And lastly, the heaviest one, gamma globulin, consists of IgZ, IgM, and C-reactive reactive protein. C-reactive protein is one of the acute phase reactant. So this alpha-beta globulin is in order of the electrophoretic mobility in agarose gel. This is the picture of the gel when the serum protein is separated by the electrophoresis process. A is from the normal person, normal serum. When the serum sample is moved from the cathode to anode, you will find these different bands. Uh, the small London protein will be present towards the anode. Then comes alpha-1 globulin, and after that, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, and the gamma. This A picture is from the normal patient, normal serum and corresponding graph in electrophoresis. Here the peak is due to, peak is because uh, peak here is the albumin that comes alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two, and the gamma globulin. Uh, this B, B is the electrophoretic gel of a serum taken from the multiple myeloma patient. Multiple myeloma is very important for your exam. It is the most of the favorite viva question, both for your practical and for your theory exam. Here in multiple myeloma, you can see a discrete clear band in gamma region. So multiple myeloma is one of the uh, cancer, cancer condition. There is proliferation of the plasma cells and gamma globulin are produced in this uh, condition. So this uh, discrete band in the gamma region is due to the monoclonal component that is gamma globulin. So B is the gel picture of the multiple myeloma uh, patient serum. And corresponding graph here, same here is albumin and in the gamma region, you can see the M spike. Okay, so please note these changes in multiple myeloma. So normal range in serum, normal range of the serum protein in 
uh, theorem. So you have to remember this normal rents. So total protein in adult is 6.72, 8.6 gram per deciliter. Please be careful with the unit gram per deciliter because most of the analytes are in milligram per deciliter. Protein is in gram per deciliter. Okay, so uh, total protein is 6.72, 8.6 gram per deciliter. Total albumin, serum albumin, normal level is 3.52, 5.5 gram per deciliter. And total globulin, normal level is 2 to 3.5 gram per deciliter. There is a ratio between albumin and the globulin. This ratio is important uh, in order to diagnose whether the uh, clinical condition later, let, will come later. A and the G ratio, that means albumin to globulin ratio, normal is 1.5 to 2.5 is to 1, means 1.5 to 2.5. You have to know the normal value of all the analytes like protein, albumin, globulin, and others too. So total protein, serum protein level in the blood depends on this three factor, dietary intake, synthesis by the liver, and the kidney function, renal function. Dietary intake, when there is decrease in the intake of the essential amino acid, there will be a decrease in the level of the protein in the blood. As I have already told you that albumin is synthesized. Albumin and other protein are synthesized by the parenchymal uh, cells of the liver. So, parenchymal cells of the liver so when there is a uh, cirrhosis of the liver cirrhosis of the liver means when there is fibrosis of the cells of the liver there will be a decrease in the synthesis of the albumin and ultimately there will be decrease in the level of the albumin in uh, blood So the third one, renal function, normally the protein, small protein that are filtered in the glomerulus is reabsorbed back, totally reabsorbed back. So there is no significant urinary excretion of the protein. But in case of the renal failure, uh, protein that is filtered through the glomerulus cannot be reabsorbed back, so there will be excretion of the protein in the blood. And it's a, uh, and it can be seen in the clin clinical condition like nephropathy, glomerulonephritis. So more excretion of the protein in the blood means there will be decrease in the blood level of the protein. This term hypoproteinemia, hypoproteinemia means there is decrease in the protein level in the blood. When the protein level, serum protein level uh, is less than 6.7 gram per deciliter, then it is termed as hypoproteinemia. And causes can be uh, with decrease in the AZ ratio and hypoproteinemia with the normal albumin and the globulin ratio. So hypoproteinemia with a decrease in the albumin globulin ratio is mainly due to decrease in the serum albumin and it can be uh, it can cause due to increased loss that means increase in the excretion of the albumin, decrease in the synthesis, decrease intake of the protein and decrease intestinal absorption and increase catabolism. So first coming to the increased loss. Increased loss means expression of the albumin in kidney. 
normally there is no excretion of the protein in uh, urine so when there is a renal disorder like nephrotic syndrome glomerular nephritis and others like hypertensive nep nephropathy and diabetic nephropathy one of the complication of the diabetes there will be increased in the excretion of protein in urine in that condition again blood level of albumin will be decreased and the second one in chronic liver disease like cirrhosis cirrhosis uh cirrhosis is the fibrous in Cirrhosis is the fibrotic condition of the liver where the liver cells will become fibrous. So the cells of the parenchymal cells of the liver uh, function will be decreased. So decreased synthesis and decreased intake in case of the quasi occur and in case of viral gastroenteritis and protein losing enteropathy, there will be decrease in the intestinal absorption of amino acids. And in condition like high grade fever and hypothyroidism, there is increase in the catabolism. So in that way also, albumin uh, AZ ratio will decrease. Hypoproteinemia with normal AZ ratio, it is due to hemodilution, dilution of the blood. Prolonged steroid intake will cause uh, hemodilution of the blood and in case of the diabetes mellitus. So these are the causes of the hypoproteinemia. And uh, this uh, you have to know it separately hypoproteinemia with decreased AZ ratio and hypoproteinemia with the normal AZ ratio. Now, coming to hyperproteinemia, when the total serum protein level is more than 8.3 gram per deciliter, it is hyperproteinemia. And again, here it can be of two types with decrease in AZ ratio and with normal AZ ratio. Hyperproteinemia with decrease in AZ ratio can be seen in chronic infection like Salazar and malaria and uh, multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma that is. Uh, malignant condition of the plasma cells where there will be increase in the gamma globulin level and uh, gamma globulin will be increased in blood so you can see m band discrete band in electrophoresis which is one of the diagnostic feature of multiple myeloma and light chain excretion excretion of the light light chain protein in urine. This is known as Van Jones protein. So this are condition of the hyperproteinemia with decreased AZ ratio. Normal AZ ratio hyperproteinemia is due to hemoconcentration of the blood due to inadequate water intake and it can be uh, and due to severe burns or prolonged diarrhea and the vomiting. In this condition, there will be a hemoconcentration of the blood. So decrease in the hyperproteinemia, uh, cause the hyperproteinemia. So this is the false, false hyperproteinemia. No, uh, hyperproteinemia with normal AZ ratio is the false hyperproteinemia. <coughs> Coming to the practical part, so we need to estimate the protein level in serum. So these are some of the methods which we use in lab to estimate the level of the protein by urate assays, lorries, BCA, Bradford assay. Out of these four, the first three by urate lorries and BCA depends on the uh, copper method and breadfruit depends on the dye method. You just know the name of this four, but by URIT essay is the important one for you. And 
will be doing the practical by using this by unit method. So by unit method for the estimation of the protein. So in every experiment, you should know the principle of every method. So by unit method ka principle is that all the compounds containing two or more peptide bonds react with copper sulfate in alkaline medium to give a complex. This is purple in color. So when the protein, protein matter of uh, peptide bonds, so automatically this protein will contain two or more peptide bonds. This will react with copper sulfate to give a purple color complex. And the intensity of the color is uh, directly proportional to the concentration of the protein. When the concentration of the protein is more in the solution, the intensity of the color will be more. And after this color complex formation, you have the color is measured at 540 nanometer. Okay, so this is the principle of the biurate method. So reagent required in this practical is normal saline. And as an and biurate reagent and standard protein solution. Standard protein solution is a non concentration protein solution. Okay, the concentration of the standard solution is eight milligram per ml. And the test solution is the unknown sample where we want to measure the concentration. The test solution that will be provided to you will be diluted serum by adding normal saline in one is to 10 dilution. Okay, so these are the reason which is required for the estimation of the protein in the test solution. Please note this concentration, concentration of the standard in this uh, practical is eight milligram per ml. And test solution, which is diluted one is to 10 times. As biurate reason is required in this practical, let's come to the Composition of the biurate reason. Biurate reason consists of sodium hydroxide, copper sulfate, potassium iodide, and uh, so sodium potassium tartrate. And this other function sodium hydroxide will provide the alkaline medium, copper sulfate will provide copper for the formation of the coordination compound. And potassium iodide acts as an oxidizing agent. Sodium potassium tartrate is uh, used as a preservative in this biurate reagent. Why this biurate name is given in this biurate method? Name of the method is biurate, but there is no biurate compound in this biurate reagent. So by reason does not contain uh, biurate. It is named because biurate compound, biurate compound, uh, uh, like biurate is, is formed by the two urea, two urea, okay. So this when biurate compound reacts with the copper, it gives the same similar col color, that purple color. So this, the name of the test is given as biurate method, even though biurate is not present in the biurate reason. So this is one of the favorite viva question, why this estimation of the serum is known as the biurate method. So coming to the protocol, 
ya prosedur this protocol is different from the manual so please note this protocol you, you 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 have to follow this protocol during your practical and during your exam and this is different from what is given in your manual first you have to take the three test tube and mark all the three test tube one test tube with t for the test solution s for the standard and b for the blank yeah so you have three test tube d s and b then in the test tube mark t that is for the test solution first you put the serum or the test solution that will be provided to you this is already one is to 10 diluted okay take 0.5 of the test solution that will be provided to you and after that at normal saline 2.5 ml of the normal saline and by and biuret resin 3 ml of the biuret resin and after taking serum normal saline and the biuret resin mix the content properly mix the test tube properly okay and in the second test tube that is for the standard in the standard test tube you have to take standard protein solution that will be your known concentration of the protein solution 0.5 ml and after the normal saline 2.5 ml and biuret 3 ml again mix it properly and in the last tube test tube plan you have to add only normal saline and the biuret resin 3 ml 3 ml so now after mixing the content properly take the test tube and incubate at 37 degrees celsius that means in the water bath for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes you will see a purple color and read optical density at 520 nanometer Please note down the changes uh, in this protocol. And you have to follow this protocol only during your practical. See. <clears throat> so after mixing the sample, you will get a color something like this. This is without uh, protein, without the test or standard. And this is with a protein sample, purple color. So blank may you will see, uh, you will get the color of this blue color type color. Uh, you will get in blank and in your standard and the test, depending on the concentration of the protein, you will get the purple color. See, I have told you the intensity of the color depends on the concentration of the protein solution that is present in the solution. So here, this is blank and after that, uh, it's almost similar only. Here, see the difference between this three test tube, one, two, and three. This is blank and compare this two test tube of the um, protein in the test tube so this will have more concentration on the protein as compared to uh, this test tube so after performing your practical you will get the colors like this okay So now coming to observation and the calculation. 
So after performing all this uh, all this procedure, at the end you have to read the optical density, and you will get optical density uh, for the standard and the blank. Uh, for the sorry for the standard and the test. Blank is to set the test in zero optical density in zero. Blank we use in the colorimetry experiment in order to nullify the colors of the reason, like by unit reason. So now coming to observation and the calculation, you will get OD of the test and OD of the standard. And this is the formula to calculate the total protein in gram per deciliter. OD of the test by OD of the standard into amount of the standard divided by amount of the sample into one by 10. And after calculation, you will get the total serum protein in gram per deciliter. I'll give you the example. So after performing the test, you will get one OD for the test and one OD for the standard, right? So this is one example. After, uh, after the practical OD of the test is 0 0.2. 2.0 and audio of the standard is 0.16. Okay, you will put these values in this formula in order to calculate the total serum protein. 0.2. Here, audio of the test 0 0.20 and audio of the standard 0 0.16. But here, what is the amount of the standard and amount of the sample? Okay, I'll go back to the previous slide. Here, the amount, the volume of the test sample taken is 0.5. And the volume of the standard sample, this is used in the experiment, is 0.5 ml. And here, the serum is diluted 10 times. And Standard protein solution concentration, non concentration is 8 milligram per ml. So, amount of the standard in order to calculate the amount of the standard, first, first uh, we'll put a value that is the non concentration of the standard. Standard concentration is 8 milligram per ml. Here, 8 milligram per ml is the non concentration of the standard solution. And we are taking only 0.5 ml of the standard in during the practical. So volume of the standard taken is 0.5 ml. 8 milligram per ml of the standard concentration means 1 ml in 1 ml of the solution, 8 milligram of protein is present. So volume taken during this practical is 0.5 ml of the standard. So by the simple unitary method, we will get this amount of the standard equal to 8 into 0.5, that is 4 milligram. So four milligram, we'll put this value four milligram here in the amount of the standard, right? Now, this amount, so like, like even though we took 0.5 ml of the standard here, 0.5 ml of the standard, amount of the standard is not 0.5. Please be careful. Amount of the standard is not 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the volume of the standard taken. But we want concentration in, uh, concentration of the protein which is present in 0 0.5. Most of the students are confused and they used to write 0 0.5 in amount of the standard. 
please don't make this mistake here amount of the standard is four milligram so now coming to the amount of the sample the serum sample or the test sample that will be provided to you is diluted one is to ten in one is to ten dilution that means in 10 ml of the test solution that will be provided to you actual amount of the serum present is one ml one ml one ml of serum so in order to calculate the amount of the serum uh, so in that protocol volume volume of the test taken is 0.5 ml and here one is to 10 dilution in 10 ml of the serum one m uh, in 10 ml of the test solution actual amount of the serum present is one ml and volume we took in our practical in our protocol is 0.5 ml of the test solution so in 0.5 ml of the test solution here again 0 .0, uh, 0 0.05 ml of the serum is actually present in 0.5 ml of the test solution. So amount of the sample here will be 0 0.05. Okay. So after putting all this value, after putting all these values like OD, 0.2 audio of the standard 0.16 amount of the standard 4 amount of the sample 0 0.05 into 1 by 10 final concentration of the total serum protein would be 10 gram per dl so in this way you have to calculate the concentration of the uh, serum protein in a test solution that will be provided to you. You can note it down, this one. So in exam, when you get the, uh, when you get this practical estimation of the protein, you have to write the principle. Principle of biurate, principle of the biurate method. this observation and the calculation and you have to calculate and find out the concentration of the protein in an unknown sample so this is the way how to calculate the concentration of the protein i know this is a bit difficult to understand without performing the test so when you come back for the physical physical class uh, we will repeat this practical, okay? And please note down the chains in the protocol. Serum is diluted one is to ten, and here is difference in the amount of volume taken for the normal saline and biuret. This is different from what is given in your practical manual. Okay, that's it. And I will share uh, this uh, PPT in your group. And please go through it. And please uh, go through the manual also. And there is a question in the back of your manual in after this topic. So please go through questions and answers. Okay. Thank you.